Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm going to show you how to determine the isotonic concentration given a graph like this. And actually, to get this graph, we would actually have to uh, use a, some data in a table like this. So let me explain the situation. We are going to have some kind of cell. Normally, we use an egg to demonstrate this, but we're going to put that cell in a solution that has a certain percent solute concentration. So in one of them, we have a 0% solute concentration. Normally, the solute is something like sucrose, which is a sugar. In the second one, we put the egg in something that has a 25% sugar concentration, and then one with a 50% sugar, 75% sugar, up to 100% sugar. Okay, And in each case, the egg has a certain start mass, or whatever cell we're using. Let's say in this case it's 100 grams. And then, after we let osmosis occur, we measure the mass of the egg at the end. Okay? So what we're saying here is when we put the egg, or whatever cell it is, in this 0% sugar solution, it started with a mass of 100 grams, and it ended up being 115 grams. Okay? When we put a different egg, also starting at 100 grams, in a 25% sugar solution, it ended up being 105 grams, and so on and so forth. Okay? What we want to do, first of all, in order to do anything, is we want to calculate the change in mass, and then also determine the tonicity, whether or not it's isotonic, hypotonic, or hypertonic. And if you need a review of these terms, go back and watch the previous video. I'll put a link to it in the description here. So first of all, what is our change in mass in the 0% sugar solution? Now we take the end mass minus the start mass. So 115 minus 100 is 15 grams. Right? For the second one, 105 minus 100 is just 5. For this 50% solution, 95 minus 100 is actually negative 5. And what you'll actually see is that I've designed this to where they're actually decreasing by 10 each time. So in this case, 75 minus 100 is negative 25. Now, for these positive ones, which are actually the first two solutions, is the solution we put it in hypotonic or hypertonic? Well, let's think about it. We started with a mass of 100 grams, and the mass actually increased. The only way that could be is if water came into the cell, it came into the egg. That extra 15 grams is probably coming from water. And so in order for water to come in, the solution has to be hypotonic. Okay? So it has to be hypotonic. So I'm just going to put right here, hypo. Since the other one's positive, this one also has to be in a hypotonic solution. Now, 50%, 75%, and 100%, we see the change in mass is negative. What we also see is that the start mass of 100 actually drops to 95, 85, or 75. So in order for that to happen, water has to be leaving the egg. The only way water can leave the cell or the egg is for it to be in a hypertonic solution. So I'm just going to put hyper for all three of these. And this is a pretty typical exercise that you'll have either in lecture or lab for anatomy and physiology. Now, we want to determine the isotonic concentration. Uh, we don't have anything here that's isotonic. That does us no good, so what we have to do instead is we have to make a graph. Okay? And in order to do this graph, what you would do is you would put on the x-axis the percent solute. Okay? On the y-axis, you'd put the end mass. This is one way to do it. And you'd graph the points. For example, for the 0% one, 0 would be the x value, and the end mass would be 115. So notice my first point is at 0, 115. The second point at 25% has an end mass of 105. So at 25%, I have something at 105. And you'll just graph these points. And they'll come very close to generating a straight line. Now the question is, how do you actually get the isotonic concentration? Well, in order to be isotonic, remember what that means. There can be no net diffusion of water in or out. It has to be balanced. So in that case, the end mass would have to be the same as the start mass. So we would need an end mass of 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that 
we do a lot in chemistry labs. I'm going to do what's called manual interpolation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to approximate where 100 is on the y-axis because I'm looking for an end mass of 100 because it has to be the same as the start mass in order to be isotonic. And so 100 is probably around right here. Um, again, I'm not trying to be exact here. I'm just trying to get through the video. But you would, if you had a little more exactness, you would look for exactly 100. And you would basically draw a line over to where this actually intercepts the line that you drew. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put a line from where this intersects our trend line straight down. Okay. And what we see here is that when this comes straight down, it intersects the x-axis about right here. Um, and again, you can be a little more precise with how you actually determine that percent solute, but it looks to me that somewhere around, let's say, 30%. 30% is the solute concentration that gives us an isotonic solution, meaning if we were to put the egg in approximately a 30% sucrose solution, the egg would not change mass because it would be in an isotonic solution and the net movement of water in and out is zero. Okay? And that's how you look at one of these graphs to determine the isotonic concentration. Hopefully this made sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.